Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and X-Plane 11. For this flight I'm going from Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam to Hong Kong. And I am flying a TU-154. It is a freeware plane. Um, looking okay. Uh, well, it, again, cockpits are hard. So, I, at least it has a virtual cockpit. I try not to fly any freeware planes that don't have virtual cockpits. But virtual cockpits admittedly are a lot of work. Um, outside looks fine. I've picked Southeast Airlines. I don't have a livery that's appropriate for Southeast Asia. I don't think Southeast Airlines actually flies Southeast Asia. I'm not sure. But it's the closest I could get. And I wanted to get the TU-154 in somehow. And this seemed to be the best slot. So, and uh, this uh, is a good livery, good looking livery. This particular um, plane does have a variety of good liveries, including for Ural Air and Uzbekistan, I think. Um, so yeah, it has that going for it. Anyway, so we are continuing with the Apollo 13 audio. They are still doing okay. Uh, they have not met with their infamous incident yet. And so I'm going to press play on that. And I'm just waiting for the audio to start. Okay. A little bit of static there. I hope the audio balance this is, is right. Control, Houston, uh, and, uh, let me turn that down just a little bit. Three minutes, uh, now into the flight of Apollo 13. Our digital displays presently show the uh, okay. 13, uh, we are well configured, and let's get some flaps and go. Miles away from Earth. Now traveling about at a velocity of uh, 67. I like free-engine airliners seconds. for some reason, so T-154 I like. Into, its, into their rest period. Here in Mission Control, we have not attempted to contact them. Continuing to monitor so they're at, at the night of their first day. Into the flight. This is Apollo Control, Houston. The incident occurs on the third day, incidentally. This is Apollo Control, Houston. At, uh, okay, gear up. Minutes, uh, Laps up. Our digital displays uh, presently show Apollo 13 at uh, 76,311 nautical miles uh, away from Earth. Consen yeah, that is looking quite down, nice. Uh, now showing a velocity of uh, 6,551 feet per second. Meanwhile, uh, during this quiet period in the Mission Control Center, the uh, white team of flight controllers headed by uh, Flight Director Gene Kranz are taking this opportunity to watch a television replay of the uh, transposition and docking phase of the mission which uh, took place uh, doesn't seem to be generating the auto gem there yesterday afternoon we're at uh, 16 hours uh, 25 minutes into the flight uh, continuing to monitor this is Apollo controlled Houston Uh, I think my passengers would have had a little bit of a sinking feeling right there. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 17 hours 23 minutes uh, now into the flight to Apollo 13. Our uh, digital displays presently show oh, we're going the too Apollo fast. 13 spacecraft at 79,919 nautical miles away from Earth. And uh, traveling at uh, a velocity of uh, 6,350 feet per second. We've had no voice uh, communications or contact uh, with Apollo 13 crewman Jim Lovell, Jack Swigert, or Fred Hayes uh, since they started their rest period. Meanwhile, this has uh, provided a period of quiet planning at the Mission Control Center. Uh, okay, the well, there's Ho Chi Minh City. And uh, mid, mid course correction number two. We'll pass along. Uh, preliminary planning numbers for you now. We're Hong Kong should be a treat. I've got good scenery the there. Time of, uh, 30 hours, uh, 40 minutes, 57 seconds for MCC2 uh, with a delta V or a velocity of uh, 23 feet per second. Uh, this, of course, will be performed with the uh, service propulsion system uh, of the command module and with a burn duration uh, now planned of uh, 3.25 seconds. Of course, uh, 
These numbers will be reviewed and updated as the mission progresses. We're now at uh, 17 hours and 25 minutes into the flight of Apollo 13, and uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. Looking nice from this site. This is Apollo Control Houston at 18 hours and 22 minutes since the start uh, of the Apollo 13 mission. We now show uh, Apollo 13, uh, 83,396 nautical miles out from Earth. Traveling now at a speed of 6,157 feet per second. At this time, the Apollo 13 crew continues uh, in, it, in their rest period. And meanwhile, in mission control, we will continue to monitor for any uh, conversations or transmissions uh, if they, in the unlikely event, they should occur. We're at 83 hours, uh, 23 minutes into the flight. This is Apollo Control Houston. Okay, well, we're not gonna have photo scenery all the way. In this case, it's quite a marked contrast. This is Apollo Control Houston at 19 hours. We got an excessive amount of farmland on the stock 13. scenery compared to the real thing, which is mostly We've, city. We've uh, just concluded another silent hour in uh, Mission Control Center as the Apollo 13 crew is still sleeping. Meanwhile, uh, backup uh, Commander John Young has joined uh, Jack Lausma at the uh, Capsule Communicators Console. At uh, this point, uh, we'll relay some uh, flight dynamics data developed uh, during this period of relative inactivity. Apollo 13 will reach its midpoint in its trip to the moon in terms of distance at an altitude of 112,070 nautical miles. Well, it this, looks like uh, this plane does not have pressurization of uh, 27 hours, 20 minutes, uh, 49 seconds. The spacecraft's velocity... Uh, it also doesn't moon, look like it has a functioning a altimeter. Uh, ...seven feet per second. Rel relative to the Earth, its uh, velocity will be 4,990 feet per second. Apollo 13 uh, will be at its midpoint waypoint in terms of time and our point of reference here is the uh, lunar well, orbit some of the other instruments are okay at least to occur at uh, 77 hours 26 minutes 12 seconds it, its midway point uh, would be at a ground elapsed time of 38 hours 43 minutes six seconds at okay, uh, that we're point to uh, down. 13 uh, will be at an altitude of 85,684 nautical miles away from the moon and traveling uh, away from the Earth uh, at a distance of 141,764 nautical miles. Its velocity uh, relative to the moon, 3,776 feet per second. Oh, well, the Mach meter relative works. Relative to the Earth, 4,098 feet per second. Apollo 13 uh, should go into the lunar sphere of influence at a ground elapsed time of uh, 62 hours of 49 minutes, zero seconds. Its distance at that time away from the moon will be uh, 33,821 nautical miles. Distance away from the Earth, 190,713 nautical miles. And uh, traveling at a velocity of 3,641 feet per second uh, relative to the moon and uh, 3,025 feet per second relative to the Earth. We're now at 19 hours, uh, 25 minutes into the flight of Apollo 13, and this is Apollo controlled Houston. Probably shouldn't be going Mach 0.9. Let's I'm throttling down. It's only started accelerating quite a lot once we this leveled out. This is Apollo Control Houston at 20 hours, 22 minutes. Now into the flight of Apollo 13. Our display now shows the uh, 
Apollo 13 spacecraft at uh, 90,380 So it's behaving pretty well. Away from the Earth. trimming is fine. Continuing to slow down. Uh, its velocity presently reading uh, 5,843 feet per second. Meanwhile, uh, in the mission control, uh, one of our multi-purpose countdown clocks shows that uh, the Apollo 13 crew has two hours, 37 minutes uh, remaining in their rest period. We're at uh, 20 hours, uh, 23 minutes into the flight, and uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. I think uh, the previous trim was a little bit better. Okay, a lot better. Get back up. This there. is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, we wish to make an announcement that the Ryder Pool meeting. This is a writer pool for the Mission Operations Control Moon uh, Room. Moon is <laughs> getting underway at the present time. Well, he's got to be saying Moon a lot, I guess. Got to make that mistake a few times. In building one. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Oh, uh, no, I don't want to cross into Cambodia. 21 hours, 21 minutes. Turn right, please. Down to the flight of Apollo 13. Apollo 13 is now 93,640 nautical miles away from Earth. Its velocity now reading 5,699 feet per second. There's one hour, 38 minutes remaining for the rest period of Jim Lovell, Jack Swikert, and uh, Fred Hayes. Based on uh, Madrid tracking of the S-4B, we're presently um, predicting a point of impact of eight degrees, uh, 35 minutes south, uh, 33 degrees, 54 minutes west at a ground elapsed time of 77 hours, uh, 51 minutes, uh, 32 seconds. Uh, these are very early numbers and subject to considerable refinement uh, through further tracking. We're at uh, 21 hours, uh, 22 minutes, continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. This is going to be a bit of a longer than usual flight, though probably not as long as the previous one with the MiG-15. And that's again because of our detour this to is Jakarta. Control, Houston at 21 hours 55 minutes since liftoff. Apollo 13 is presently 95,511 nautical miles out from Earth and uh, now traveling at a speed of uh, 5,620 feet per second. In Mission Control Center, uh, we're now experience a change, uh, experiencing a changeover in flight control teams. Uh, the Lunny team is, has reported aboard uh, replacing uh, Gene Kranz's team of flight controllers. At the capsule communicator position, uh, Joe Kerwin is in now in place of Jack Lausma. For the uh, entire shift, uh, we had no contact with the crew as they were in a rest period. Jack Lausma, although he served as our capsule communicator, up, 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 up. can be distinguished by the fact he had absolutely nothing to say over the loop this morning. <laughs> well, there was no one to talk to. 56 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. That's interesting. Uh, during the Starliner fight, uh, I saw somebody comment that uh, the Capcom didn't have much to do. Um, and that's not always true with these test flights. Sometimes the Capcoms run through basically what they would normally say to the crew and what kind of checks they would be doing with the crew. Even if the crew is not. Uh, actually, somebody would normally play the crew during such a test. So. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know if they were doing that. It's possible that uh, during the Starliner test, if they had a Capcom there, uh, that they would have somebody else playing the crew and running through the normal communications.
I recall that the Soviets used to do that a lot and sometimes try and spoof the Americans listening in into thinking that there was actually a cosmonaut on board on board the test flights. Oh darn, can't quite hear him. Oh, why are we suddenly... Oh, we went quite a ways up. I was looking for the plane. Uh, this one, I believe, is by user124 on, on the forums. I believe that's the one I have here. Hmm. Doesn't seem to want to stay at a particular altitude and speed so far. Good. Okay, Good sleep. Now uh, let's see what else we got for you. Maybe a light 33,000 feet of course, more. Uh, two looks like about 23 feet per second, uh, approximately retrograde and on time. Uh, and it's uh, holding real firm there. Uh, for your information, and uh, you don't need to copy this down because it's still pretty soft, but uh, we have an S4B impact of about uh, 8.57 south and about 33.9 west, which is uh, a little west and a little south of the uh, flight plan value. We have it at a GET of about 77 plus 51, which is uh, just before AOS on the LOI pass, or a little bit late. and. Uh, as I say, it's still pretty soft, and we'll be updating you with, uh, with firm numbers. That's a fine joke. It's lost in the post premium. Okay. And I'll have a consumables update for you in a little while. And I have a small flight plan update for you sometime a little later on. If you're ready to copy, there's uh, no big deals in it. All right. And uh, 13, uh, Houston, we'd like to verify that you uh, cycled the O2 uh, cryo fans. We saw the H2, but we didn't see the O2 get started. Uh oh, the cryo fans. Uh, yeah, Joe, we did, and uh, kind of looked like we might have had a little stratification because right after we put them on, we had a, a, a cryo press light. Okay. They had a cryo press light after turning them on. Hmm.
TFM values uh, in the GNC checklist on page G9-2. These are fairly small changes, but in case you need them, we'd like you to yeah. have the exact numbers. Over. Okay, just a minute. Joe, is that the GNC checklist? Uh, that's affirmative. Uh, GNC, uh, <coughs> page G9-2. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, on that page in uh, line 04, column B, change the number from 03366 to 05253. Over. Five, three. Okay, and in uh, line zero 05, column B, change from 11000 to 33661. 33661. Makes it look okay, like we're climbing right. more than we ought to be. Uh, I mean, just the, the attitude of the plane. Jack is uh, uh, three additional mm -hmm. questions for the. Uh, Booster systems debriefing, uh, which is to take place at about 25 hours, and uh, thought we'd pass these questions up to you early so you can consider them. Over. Okay, uh, we're ready. Okay, the uh, first extra is, and uh, let me get the original question because uh, this question says more specifically on item two. And item two says, were there any significant changes in the noise vibration level during a single stage of powered flight? Specifically, describe your observations during the early S2 center engine cutoff and approximately 90 seconds prior to TLI cutoff, you reported a high vibration in the S4B. We'd like you to describe the buildup of this vibration and its behavior through cutoff. Over. Okay, essentially what you'd like us to talk about is the uh, vibration uh, sequence uh, during the uh, early S2 cutoff of the center engine and also uh, describe the vibrations that we uh, encountered during the, the uh, S4B TL on Bird, is that correct? That's it. Okay, uh, the second extra question is for you, Jim, and it says, Comparing this flight with your ride on Apollo 8, were there any significant differences in the powered flight environment? Ah, it's nice to have somebody who's flown on it before, okay, huh? Okay, we'll describe uh, a comparison with uh, 8 and 13 as far as power flight goes. Uh, Roger, and the uh, last additional question is, what did the ordeal ball look I, like I TLI? I don't know, I think he would be the first person to have flown on Saturn V twice. Like Trying to think. Okay, that's it. That's uh, that's the whole flight plan update. Uh, I have a consumables update now. If you want to listen to that. Okay, Joe, ready? Okay. At uh, 23 hours, the total RCS is 1121. Quad A is 274. Yeah, I can't think of anyone off the top of my head that would have flown on Saturn V twice before Jim Lovell. Quad Charlie is 274. Quad Delta is 287. Uh, and the cryos are as follows. H2 tank 1, 83%. H2 oh, tank 2. That wants to go down now. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. O2 tank 1, 87%. O2 tank 2, 87%. Over. Okay, Joe. Uh, oh, this is all Vietnam. And I expect that if we had photo scenery here, it'd be a much more varied landscape. Uh, as I understand it, Jack, you're. No, we're going way high running, now. Uh, slightly ahead of nominal in, uh, in both those areas. No problems. I think uh, my increased impatience with it is not helping. And 
This is why they let the autopilot do this part. I want to say FAO is the flight activities officer, so managing the crew's flight time. We'll be approaching the coast at Da Nang. And after that, we've got some water to cross before we get to Hainan Island. And then beyond that, we'll follow the Chinese coast up to Hong Kong. This is Apollo Control, continuing to monitor the air ground from Apollo 13. I wonder if we have a working Crew fuel gauge in, uh, somewhere in here. Breakfast period. Uh, About an hour from now, uh, head engaging great. Launch vehicle um, systems performance debriefing will be carried out between the no. crew of Apollo 13 and the uh, flight controllers here in the mission control room. And additional uh, questions we're going down uh, too fast. over the ones that were pre-planned and included in the flight plan. Uh, will be passed to the crew from the booster systems engineer. Well, considering we don't have a working altimeter, I think it'd be uh, too much to ask for that, a working uh, fuel gauge. Many of the debriefing items can be carried on in flight during rather quiet periods of the coast phases of the flight and thereby reduce the amount of debriefing done after recovery. Spacecraft now 102,342 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity now 5,345 feet per second. Ground elapsed time now 24 hours, 5 minutes. Apollo Control continuing to stay alive in anticipation of uh, the morning news being read up by spacecraft communicator Joe Kerbin to the crew. And a rather quiet day all in all coming up uh, at 30 hours and 40 minutes uh, with mid-course correction burn number two, which is the hybrid transfer maneuver to take the spacecraft out of the free return trajectory. Don't take it out of free return trajectory. <laughs> non-free return. You don't need to do Still that. Still within the capability of uh, the propulsion systems of the spacecraft to get back onto a free return. Yes, we know. <laughs> it does. Parasentian should but uh, the spacecraft propulsion systems, that's a bit of a problem. Nautical miles above the moon. That's a bit of a problem. Post burn, it's uh, more in the neighborhood of 60.2 nautical miles if the maneuver is done on time and with the desired velocity change. 24 hours, 6 minutes, continuing to stand by.
Yeah, exterior texture is pretty good on this. I plan to fly to Manila next, okay, and that'll be in a 747-100 Pan Am livery. The quartet is reported to have made in excess of a half billion dollars during their short musical career. However, uh, rumors that they will use this money to start their own space program uh, are false. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done your taxes? How do I apply for the yeah, uh, I got a. Is that, that a, a kind of things kind of happen real fast down there, and I, I do need an extension. Yeah, uh, just a reminder the launch date for Apollo 13 was April 11th, the landing date April 17th, the normal tax day is April 15th, so. Be a more interesting movie than you guys think at this point. Now they've got him worried about taxes, God. as if they don't have enough to be worried about. And Jim McDivitt says, yeah, uh, now that you mention he forgot to fill the asset stage. 
<laughs> Should give you very good performance on descent. You should have a lot more hover time, huh? That's right. Okay, crew, about the only other thing I've got for you right now is an update to your P-37 pad for liftoff plus 35. Uh, this is a change to the pad we gave you yesterday. Uh, the reason for the update is uh, for weather avoidance in the mid-Pacific landing area at 70 hours, which is the uh, return time for this pad. And uh, in case the question arises in your mind, uh, we don't expect any problem there for the end of the mission. The uh, the weather area is 20 degrees south of your end of mission landing point, and uh, it appears to be moving to the south. Okay, uh, Joe, ready to come back. Okay, uh, GET of ignition is 03500, Delta VT 7883, longitude minus 155, and the GET 400K. 06954. Over. Okay. Well, we've got these mountains here. Past them should be Da Nang and the coast. The LEM CM Delta P is the difference in pressure between the two. The lunar module and the command module. They have a little reading at the hatch between them. Okay, you're a little broken up there, Jim, but I think it's getting better. Uh, we're ready for the uh, launch vehicle systems debriefing whenever you want.
Roger, and I assume comm was okay. As for a problem during the uh, drop in the power flight, much of the next. Okay, Jim, uh, I guess uh, the significant point there is that you did notice the vibration before you saw the engine light. Uh, That's right. we're going to go we again. The vibration, but uh, yeah, it wasn't uh, such that uh, we thought something catastrophic was going to happen. It just started a vibration, then the light came on, and then the uh, vibration went away on the uh, stage itself. Was just okay, copy that. Yeah, and then, uh, it was all pretty, uh, pretty short span, and, uh, just a second or so before and uh, like a second afterwards, uh, Joe. Uh, Roger. And uh, on the S4B, the vibration of the vehicle itself was on the fan from its uh, power to uh, a very uh, high uh, frequency. That was, uh, was that during, just during TLI, or did you notice that at insertion? Well, it was a high frequency violation, uh, pressure, but, uh, was, uh, more noticeable during the TLI burn, uh, than it was during the, uh, first phase. Well, Downing should be around okay, here understand. soon, up ahead. Plane is still really hard to keep nice and level, just by the trim. I guess the the S4B vibration during uh, TLI was there all the time, although it seemed to uh, to uh, grow to us uh, as the burn progressed. So well, that may have been just due to the uh, this weight uh, decrease. Okay, you call us about three and a half minutes, but I guess the thing was slowly building up throughout the whole burn, right? That's right. Okay, was it uncomfortable or did it uh, cause your vision to degrade or anything like that? No, it was not uncomfortable at all, but I was recalling the uh, ride on 8 and uh, uh, the S4B was uh, more, uh, much more smooth than 8 than it was. Copy that. Nope, oh, there's the coast. Oh, there's Da Nang as we... Uh, it's uh, beyond the clouds there. Um, unfortunately, cloud shrouded right now. Not a big city, though. And I don't have photo scenery around here, so I'm not gonna like divert to take a look at her or anything. Okay, understand. Uh, Joe, on that, I, I guess most of every time a few shift occurred, we all, uh, you can all, all of us plan to the engine light. We can feel that in the acceleration stage. Roger, understand, Jack. And uh, during the high fuel uh, portion of the point, Oh, I really can't hear what he said there. Uh, apparently the Capcom did, so... Okay, we are going to proceed to Hainan Island now. And I guess the engine will survive. In the meantime, do we have any communication problems during the 
Roger. Okay, departing Vietnam now. The clouds are definitely not letting us see Da Nang in particular. No stupid questions. Uh Uh-oh. Choppy audio. Really choppy audio. Doesn't sound pretty good, but okay. If that's the best they can do. This particular part of the water is technically the Gulf of Tonkin, or whether it's just South China Sea. It's sort of in an indecisive position, but we are there. Okay. 
straight, understand? Okay, I'm uh, comparing the uh, flight of the 13th with the Apollo 8. Uh, liftoff uh, was about the same amount of vibration as uh, I noticed on 8. Uh, but uh, at the beginning of the flight, uh, there was less of the sideways motion that we uh, experienced on Apollo 8. Uh, the uh, S1C separation felt more violent on uh, 13 and 8. Maybe that's because that was a different seat, I don't know. Uh, about uh, three uh, sharp uh, transients of the cutoff and uh, a couple of big bangs uh, where we were going backwards so our longitudinally on our straps before the S2 went off. And uh, the S2 uh, was, uh, of course, uh, just as smooth on 13 and 8 except for the uh, number 5 engine. And we did not experience the uh, vibration that we experienced on 8 towards the end of the S2 burn. And uh, the S4B was uh, had more vibration than the end of 8. Okay, Jim, got all that. Uh, the up. Uh, the update on the ordeal ball uh, was a good one. Uh, at the burn, uh, uh, we were uh, about uh, just about eight degrees. Uh, we had the pitch down. Uh, the uh, yaw was right on all the way through the entire burn, and just towards the end of the uh, burn, uh, the ball started going from black and pitch a little bit. Okay, sounds good. We'll give Mike Wash a gold star now. Okay, Jim, stand by one while I see if we have any uh, extra questions. Uh, Jim, uh, while we're waiting to see if they have any more questions, uh, I'd like to read you the uh, booster people's preliminary analysis on the, uh, the S2 cutoff. Over. No, we're going down a little bit After fast. I got the Okay, preliminary analysis of the data indicates that the center S2 engine vibrated at a somewhat higher amplitude than we've seen on previous flights, and it started at about 160 seconds into the S2 burn. As a result of these vibrations, the engine chamber pressure decreased to the level where the two low-level thrust sensors, the thrust OK sensors, initiated center engine cutoff. Uh, early evaluation of data indicates that no damage occurred to the engine, and the uh, cause of the uh, increased vibration amplitude yep. is While the still under Airbus A380 was more troublesome initially, it more or less stabilized out. This one has not been so nice about yep, that. Right. They're really big on the three sigma margins on this mission. Didn't really hear much about that in previous missions, but then we had that press conference earlier in it in response to the second stage anomaly. Again, the irony is thick because we know that there is something on board that is not is within the margins. <laughs> that is not the within the tolerances.
Apollo 13, now 106,747 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity continuing to slow down, now 5,179 feet per second. The spacecraft will reach the midpoint in distance where it's equally far from the Earth to the spacecraft or from the spacecraft to the moon at uh, ground elapsed time of 27 hours, 20 minutes, 49 seconds. At that time, uh, it will be 112,070 nautical miles both ways to the Earth and to the moon. Continuing to stand by on the air to ground circuit for further conversation. And just a reminder, three sigma, I'm assuming is three standard deviations, which means 99% uh, chance of success, one in a hundred chance of failure. several hundred miles aft of you. Um, 700 miles is uh, is the number, I'm told. And uh, since the slot panel didn't make the mid-course correction, that might be it. Yeah, um, so yeah, uh, when the really spacecraft uh, separates from sure the S-4B stage, the third stage of Saturn V, yeah. there are also four uh, panels uh, that let loose. And basically, they're seeing those one of those panels tumbling. Those panels wouldn't make the same correction as the S4B. Does it have a shape or is it a point? They're pretty shiny panels. I mean, uh, I guess, the last guess we had they, they certainly don't want one of those panels uh, accidentally the hitting the mission when the mission does some mid-course correction, so it is important to make note of see. those. And they're saying it might make a, they're saying it might make a hundred to hundred twenty Low probability rate. event, but still. So we can see Hainan Island in front of us. It'll, uh, it'll still be uh, past the Terminator for, uh, for a while. Uh, right, it'll be at about the uh, Rev 20 Terminator, so uh, it'll be it'll be late late in your lunar orbit activities before you'll be able to uh, photograph it. <coughs> and FAO is looking at whether we can work that in or not. Okay.
Statute Miles coming up. Mark. That computes out to 112,070 nautical miles. Continuing, continuing to leave the circuit live as we anticipate uh, further discussions and later on today the mid-course correction burn number two which will take Apollo 13 out of the free return trajectory into the so-called hybrid trajectory which would not necessarily return to the vicinity of the Earth closest approach would be something in the nature of 40,000 miles coming back from the non-free return trajectory. At 27 hours, 21 minutes, ground elapsed time and standing by, this is Apollo Control. Houston, go ahead. Just passing comment, Joe. We're having uh, lunch right now. And I uh, just made myself a hot dog sandwich with ketchup. Very tasty and almost unheard of uh, the old days. Uh, that's correct, 13. As I recall the flight plan, you're supposed to put mustard on the hot dogs and not ketchup, but uh, I guess we'll overlook that. How's everything going? Well, it's an even longer flight than I thought it was going to be. Maybe I should have the fuel indicator on, like I did with the last flight, because we're getting a little bit long in the tooth. I put quite a bit of fuel in, but good to have the numbers up anyway. It looks good. Plenty of margin there. Uh, Houston, uh, 13. 13 Houston, go ahead. Uh, I should have gotten photo scenery for all this trip. That would have been nice. Hong Kong and beyond, we should have plenty. Though the flight to Manila is mostly over water. Thirteen Houston. Uh, go ahead. Uh, that, that's acceptable, Fred. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, when you guys are ready to copy, we got an MCC two pad for you. Okay. Stand by one. Uh, Roger that, and uh, also if you uh, can go to Pooh and accept conveniently, we'd like to uplink. Okay, you got it. Okay. CC2, SPS, GNN, 63634, plus 0906, minus 023, 030, 40, 4900, minus 00217, Minus zero 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 one seven minus zero 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 eight zero zero eight zero one six four three two six in slash A in slash A zero zero two three two zero zero three Decimal five will give you half a second on the burn time because it's so short. Zero zero one eight five 
1359 er 281 and the rest is N slash A. Comments. Set stars 31 and 23. Roll the line 288. Pitch 205. Yaw 034. No ullage. Lem weight 3349er. And over. it might be oscillating in an acceptable range as far as altitude now. We'll see. It peaked out at 33,500 basically. Let me see where it bottoms out at. I don't have to keep missing with the trim all the time. Still Hainan Island. So not quite to the center of it yet. Looks like it bombed out at 32,600. That's a thousand feet of wobble, not the greatest, certainly not good by airliner standards, but I'll take it just so I don't have to keep fiddling around with it. Roger, read back correct. I have uh, two more short comments on it, but I want to uh, wait just a second and make sure I understand them before I pass it to you. I have to gently turn to the right. I hope I'm not gonna mess around with the oscillating altitude. Okay, Fred Houston. Go ahead. Uh, the two additional comments were just that, first of all, they've biased Delta VC by minus decimal three four feet per second based on your uh, EMS null bias checks that's just for information and uh, the second one also for information is that your targeted Parasynthian is six zero miles after this correction bias is 0.34, very small. Okay, 0.34 on the uh, EMS delivery line. Roger. And, uh... And Joe, we'll give, go ahead, we'll Jeff. Give, we'll, give the re, we'll give you the results from another uh, no bias test uh, for comparative purposes uh, right before the, uh, at the proper time. Okay, real fine, and the computer is yours. It'll be interesting to redo this around the world in A-planes for the new flight sim, the Microsoft flight sim, but I wonder how long it'll take before I can accumulate 80 planes in it. That's a good question. 80 planes of sufficient quality. May take a while. I expect that X-Plane 11 will still have the better selection of planes and for a while. Of course, Houston, right now problem. even the uh, Flight Sim 10 has okay, the best Joe selection Tyler of planes. Uh, hours, zero minutes, 30 seconds. Roger that. It's all a matter of time. Uh, the rest in flash A. 
Set star three one two three. Roll on line two eight eight. Pitch two zero five. Yaw zero three four. Uh, it's creeping no up in altitude still. Three three four nanner nanner. Roger, read back correct. I have uh, two more short comments on it, but I want to. <coughs> uh, I'll let it be. Wait just a second and make sure I understand it before I pass it to you. Okay. Normally as it goes up it slows down and then its tendency to go up diminishes, but it just keeps creeping up there. Okay, Fred Houston. Uh, the two additional comments were just that, first of all, they biased delta VC by minus uh, let me decimal take three down the throttle feet per a little second bit, maybe. based on your uh, EMS null bias checks. That's just for information. And uh, the second one also for information is that your targeted paracynthian is six zero miles after this correction. Okay, now it's going back down. Okay, I uh, understand uh, for Jack's information, the uh, EMS uh, LV bias is uh, 3.4, and our targeted paracentian uh, after this maneuver is 60 miles. That's correct on the paracentian, the EMS bias is 0.34, very small. Okay, 0.34 on the uh, EMS LV bias. Roger. And, uh, and Joe, we'll give, go ahead, we'll Jack. Give, we'll, give you the re, we'll give you the results of another uh, no bias test uh, for comparative versus uh, right before the, uh, at the proper time. Okay, real fine, and the computer is yours. Okay, thank you. Go on, Jack, give us a second. And 13 Houston, we have them, you can torque them. Okay, Joe, time of torque, uh, 29 hours, 0 minutes, 30 seconds. Roger that. This is Apollo Control at 29 hours, 23 minutes, ground elapsed time. Ignition countdown clock toward the mid-course correction number two, which will take Apollo 13 out of its free return trajectory, now shows one hour, 16 minutes, 55 seconds until ignition. This burn at a ground elapsed time at 30 hours, 40 minutes, 49 seconds will be uh, Service propulsion system burn, 23.2 feet per second retrograde. Well, we'll lower the spacecraft Paracynthian, our closest approach to the moon, to around 60 nautical miles. At uh, 29 hours, 24 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control standing by for resumption of conversation between spacecraft communicator Vance Brand, who has relieved Joe Kerwin here in Mission Control, and the crew of Apollo 13. Okay, we are approaching the strait between Hainan Island and mainland China. I cannot pronounce the name of that strait, but basically it's to our left right now. But we can't really see very well with the clouds and the shadow on the terrain. And we have about three items. Give you Jack. Okay, uh, stand by one. Uh, th are these updates or what? Uh, I'm going to give you uh, some high gain antenna angles for TV, and the rest is just information. Uh, 
general words. Go ahead, yeah, the shadows okay. are such that we can't uh, really see attitude. a whole lot down there. Uh, for TV, your pitch and yaw angles are as follows. Pitch minus one, minus six nine, yaw one eight zero. High gain. Okay. Okay, second point is We're more or less over flying over the CC2. city of High Co. H A I K O U. Okay, real fine. And uh, the last items for Jack. Jack uh, I think I can see the shore down there. Indications are that you can get a 60-day extension. So we are uh, head over the strait if you're out of the country. Yes, he is yeah, well, out of we the were country. Yeah, we just looking at the map, and you're south of Florida, so south of you're Florida. You're not in the country now. But uh, we wondered, how about your your car tags? Have you taken care of those? I guess. How far does uh, yeah, I did. Uh, a country's I territorial airspace go exactly? I think I A lot of these names I just can't pronounce. Roger, Jack, copy. Uh, very good. But we couldn't tell you whether it's 44 or not. But we are now over mainland China. Whoops. A penin the peninsula that sticks out towards Hainan Island. And we need to turn a little bit right in okay, order to point out Hong, Hong Kong. Uh, Jack, that's a firm. You have a go for those. Okay. We should be less than half an hour away. K-13 Houston, that's a firm at the flight plan okay. scheduled time. All right.
We've got a beautiful site we want to show you. Right. Oh heck, Earth has to be practically a dot in the window by now. Uh, 13 Houston, uh, you can go ahead with the TV now. They got to zoom by. in quite a lot to see it. I mean, when I say dot, probably like moon sized. Or a little bit more okay, than moon sized. Here. Okay. Yep, star of the key TV, we can hear the extra hum in the background. Okay, Jack, uh, it's coming in, and it's right in the center of our screen. Okay, Vance, uh... Uh, can you, uh, make your guess what that might be, uh, Vance? Better than Charlie? I don't want to start flipping coins at this point. Okay, Vance, we're pointed uh, just a little ways off from looking directly at the moon. Uh, Jim is holding the camera through window three. The sun is coming at about uh, 40 degrees off our left side. And what uh, we're going to show you in just a minute is uh, about 30 seconds of wastewater dump to show you just what it looks like. It's uh, really fantastic. Okay, we'd like to see that. We saw uh, some droplets uh, speeding out for a little while, Jack. Now we don't see anything. Actually, uh, Vance, what you're looking at is uh, solid uh, water droplets coming out just about uh, all the time. It lights up the whole uh, sky around the moon. Uh, it's just probably too fine for you to see. Now I think they're coming out a little thicker. Okay. Yeah, we see those. Fido says he can understand why that would perturbate a trajectory now. It's amazing watching these uh, little frozen droplets maneuver. Uh, they seem to go in all directions and finally have to get out a certain way, settle down, and they all seem to be traveling about the same direction. All right, that's uh, coming in real well. Uh, objects in the foreground uh, are part of the lamp that you're looking at. The camera's now going over. Okay. Not that we can see much of it right now, but the uh, Chinese coast is to our left, and we're over the water right now. Headed basically straight for Hong Kong along the coast. I probably should have picked uh, okay, an earlier time in the day to avoid the shadows, maybe? Um, let me see what the sun angle is. It's not too bad a sun angle, but... Certainly not directly overhead. I've got the real world weather turned on, and apparently it is this cloudy around here, so what can I do? It's not, I don't think, the most scenic scenery ever. It's not like the Himalayas, so I'm not gonna turn off the real world weather for it.
Go on K flight, we, we shouldn't leave it there too long. Okay, now 13 requests you either move it away from the uh, <coughs> the bright area or else uh, move it back to peak, over. Well, I'm more pleased now, by the way, it's stabilized. It's uh, coming about the same, Fred, and you're a little weak now. It's looking a little bit better now. We could see when you went back to peak. Oh, we can see some coastline there. We're uh, sort of we see it just as a south of Mao Ming. That seems to be the largest city nearby right now. It's over to our left there somewhere. A sight of land. Looks like the clouds might clear up up ahead. We'll see. Yeah, I've gone back to average now, and 
and hand the picture. Roger. Uh, the city down there right now is Yangtze. Y A N G X I. Not a very big city. Next big city up is Yangjiang. And we should be pointed directly at it. Okay, we're picking up uh, panel two now. Still a little bit of the checklist. Okay, this city below us here is Yangjiang. And I think it's the largest city until we get to Macau. Okay, that's better. Didn't really go through the stats for the TU-154 yet. There are numerous variants. I don't know exactly which one this one is supposed to be. Roger, Houston copies. But basically they carry about 150 people on average. Is that too close an answer? Can you make out the... Maximum takeoff weight about 100 tons. Empty 50-ish tons. Can see your, uh, fuel and oxidizer gauges and the B2 version nominal range is about 1,300 to 2,000 nautical miles. Like the the M version, to you 154 m is more like 3,000 miles, so much longer range. Seems like the big difference. Uh, the B2 had uh, 90 right, kilonewton uh, engines. Whereas the M has 103 kilonewton engines, but presumably much more efficient because the fuel capacity didn't really change much in order to provide the extra range. Maximum speed is supposed to be Mach 0.86, which, which, which we have exceeded a few times, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. I've got it up to Mach 0.9. What is it now? Uh, it's uh, Mach 0.89 right now, so probably shouldn't be going that fast, but you'll have to forgive me. I've got the throttle at less than 50% right now, so um, it's all structural. It's got plenty of thrust like any other plane would. Oh, we've got photo scenery now. Uh, 
Looking nice, and too. I feel like the fuel consumption of this is a little bit low, but I don't know. Perhaps it's just the M version with better efficiency. I feel like it's a bit hesitant Let me so now that we have the photo scenery underneath. Let me just get the FPS thing. So the area that includes Macau, Hong Kong, and also Guangzhou is all the Pearl River Delta, more or less. And once we see some uh, inkling of the Pearl River, I'll point it out. But some of this is probably related to the Pearl River, like this outlet here. Right in front of us. Pro River is also called Zhu Jiang. Zhu Jiang. Also known as Canton River. Okay, I think Macau's in sight. We should start descending. So yeah, all of this is related to the Pearl River Delta. Most of the Delta is up a ways. There's a bay it forms. Macau is on the west side of the bay and Hong Kong is on the east side of the bay. The city that's actually sort of 
up the Delta is Guangzhou. Okay, so right in front of us is Macau. Okay, you can copy your residuals. Very low. And if you see on the horizon there, we can see some of the islands of Hong Kong. And then, of course, the estuary, the bay, formed by the outlet of the Pearl River and its tributaries, including this river right here, is related to the whole system. Here is Macau. Let me show you one, if the folks might, down there might be interested in how we find out how far we're away from the moon. I'm going to do that right now in program 21 here. Okay. I'm asking the computer how far away we are. And the computer is telling me we're 121,490 miles out. Okay, that uh, agrees fairly closely with our map on the wall. You can see the Hong Kong International Airport there on Lantau Island. That's a filled up area. There was. Just got landfill. And, uh, if you didn't see our residual, there was one tenth X, two tenths on the Y, and one tenth on Z, and the double DC was minus three point eight. Not part of the original natural island. Man made. So again, last bit of Macau. Miles 520 up. So I guess we all agree. Okay, real good, Vance. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, give you a shot of Fred. We can get all the wiring out of the way. My problem here is when you move the TV down. This wire follows you like a snake here. So the airport yeah, and then the island to the south of it <laughs> is Lantau uh, Island. Getting ready to uh, rope the checklist. Uh, Hong Kong Disneyland is also on Lantau well, Island. Yeah, you can see uh, it it's on the um, eastern bit of it. Been, uh, Two hour left pretty, uh, is the new territories. Those are the parts that were actually leased uh, to the Brits. The new territories. The, the Brits controlled get, uh, Hong Kong. Pretty, they didn't uh, lease Hong Kong from uh, uh, right. from uh, China. Uh, real in the it was only the new territories that were leased dark, from China. Uh, looks like uh, might help to have the F stop run down about one increment. See how it yeah, comes out. Interesting and huge airport there. So yeah, new territories okay, to our left, the, uh, and in front of us you can see the buildings at okay, Kowloon uh, and Hong Kong good. Island. We can uh, make out Fred uh, 
fairly well. Looks like he's in a shadow. Hey, that helps. You just turned up the lights, huh? Yeah, we went uh, fixed on the... Uh... Okay, you're on candid camera. No, we're going way fast. We did notice one thing, Vance. You know that new fan with long hair? Uh, what was that one again? They say you know the new, the new fan with long hair. Right. It doesn't work too well up in space. You can't call me hair up here. Well, um, actually, in sight, I believe you can see Shenzhen. Shenzhen. Um, uh, at my uh, well, left wing that, tip uh, there, the try. beyond that you river, your hair there, Jim. is Shenzhen and uh, China proper. Looks like you're, you're south of that river is the point, uh, where you've Hong Kong, the razor, including though. new territories. So uh, the island we're pointing uh, directly to uh, is Hong Kong Island. And then and, uh, across the harbor is Kowloon. And you can sort of see the boundary of the area. Well, not quite, but uh, basically Hong Kong Island and Kowloon are what the Brits had before the lease. I mean, nothing derogatory, I understand. And, uh, fans, I thought we'd get a picture of, of Jack. Much like uh, Singapore, it strikes me how, even though it's such a densely packed city there's so much yeah, green we, uh, nevertheless even on that. hong kong island i mean is. that's very valuable Big Jack. terrain obviously <laughs> uh, but still kept green very expensive land okay obviously the frame rate is slow with the sheer intensity of the right now uh, uh, we have a I don't want to. Uh, we'll deal with it. Window, we'll deal with it. I don't want to so, reduce uh, the quality. We can't. Uh, I think you're smiling, but it's a little hard to tell. Okay. Well, I'm, we're at 10,000 feet. Thank I need you. to slow down. Hey, there we go. We'll come back around, of course. We have to get back to the airport. Much as it'd be interesting to land at the Isn't old airport we, uh, there. We've been getting all kinds of uh, bits of information to, to pass up to you. Uh, we've had baseball scores coming in, uh, basketball. Somebody said there are 220 days, shopping days. You can see trip. some crazy videos of airliners landing there. turn. Like I said, good scenery around here. And it looks like the graphics card improvement is working yeah, well. I mean, I think a, uh, my frame rates would have been much uh, worse like otherwise. This is some pretty intense scenery, you can tell. Uh, what are you, doing now? you can you still see some airplanes on there. <laughs> oh, it's, it's telling me your rendering options are too high. 
the worst I've got is Paris. Uh, some real uh, dedicated flight s French flight simmers made a really good rendition yeah, of Paris, but it, it's very taxing. It's, uh, so that's basically but, uh, if I wanted the uh, worst case scenario you know, where I would test it. This is uh, not too bad. This spike uh, explains protestations. Now, uh, you don't see all the uh, sparkly uh, frozen uh, particles out that there anymore. We've sort of run off and left them. Well, half of my instruments inside the cockpit uh, don't right, work. Uh, we, we don't see anything out there in, anymore in the way of particles leaving the spacecraft. Uh, we'd suggest uh, maybe you zoom the moon in a little bit uh, again so we can see the shape of it better. Just a beautiful city over here. Melon-shaped disc. Okay, and uh, now you can see a few uh, spark, uh, sparkling particles going across the screen. Uh, those are uh, being emitted from the thrusters. Uh, Jack's uh, maneuvering the, the spacecraft now. Okay, let's get our first inkling of flaps. Oh. Uh, okay, we can see gear. those very uh, poorly. Uh, they're, well, actually, they're coming okay. in better now. Okay, time like to get into the cockpit now. Going from the upper left part of the screen across to the right. And understand those yep. are from the thrusters. Oh sure, now I have a haze. We have, we've had no semblance of haze the whole time. Okay, uh, 13, uh, Houston, uh, just as an item of interest, advise your speed with respect to the Earth now is 4,667 uh, feet per second. Wow. Great. Okay, <laughs> thanks, man. Oh, you can see some lights there, but I appear to be high. I don't see the pappy lights. Okay, Apollo 13, Houston. Uh, the moon has been in and out of the, the our screen. And again, I don't have an right altimeter. Now it's, uh, off at the bottom side, but we can still see the particles coming off from the spacecraft. Of course, I I actually have an altimeter in the upper left. I just completely ignored that for a little bit. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to have to pull it out okay. the window now, yeah. Lance. Uh, I do have that one for me. Coming up on the right side. Uh, Roger, understand you. Do you want to see the one on the LED map? Say again. Do you want to see any of the uh, photographs, or do you want to have the PD down the LED? Uh, that's right, Jim. Uh, it'd be good to see what you're doing down in the uh, LED or the, uh, uh, the far corner of the Lower equipment bay is LED. Are be interesting to describe uh, what you will do in the next few minutes in the way of fighting. Okay, Vance, uh, first we're going to give you a shot of uh, the sleep station. Oh, they've got uh, the Russian commentary. A lot of the uh, Russian airliners include that sort of co-pilot call-out thing. I've noticed. A favorite touch, I suppose. Roger, understand we're looking at the wastebasket. And the age-old question that's always asked us is how do we get rid of liquid waste? And that line that you see, I think you can see it now. Uh, it goes right outside where we open up the overboard drain dump, and uh, all of our waste products, uh, liquid waste products, plop through that line and get uh, dumped overboard. 
Uh, Roger, understand, and uh, we can see somebody. Okay, foot. looks like we've got a good taxiway well. there. Okay, we're right. uh, quite down Next there. Starting underneath the uh, sleep station on his side, where we have a, uh, a sleep restraint, and the whole object of that is to position the body between the. And here we are in Hong Kong. Where we have a, uh, a sleep restraint, and the whole object of that is to position the body between the, between the uh, bottom of the spacecraft. It's been a long uh, flight. The, the flight to Manila uh, won't be couch. short, but I think it'll be shorter than this one. Uh, Roger, the uh, sleep restraint or the hammock uh, coming into view. I thought I'd taken the brakes off. It should be able to go faster uh, than this. But... Yeah, okay. Keep taxing. All right, let me pause the audio right there. Right there. All right, so we'll continue with the Apollo 13 audio and a flight to Manila next time in the 747. And oh, it is sticky as far as taxiing. Anyway, so with this, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this flight. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.